Coach Tony. Hey, everybody, we're back, and we are talking about the age-old topic of parental criticism. Adam, did you hear that double my speed ad? <laughs> that was that was the worst thing I've yeah. ever <laughs> Oh, my God, I like I, used, <laughs> I totally used doublemyspeed.com. Double my speed. <laughs> and double it, like, totally God. cleaned up my hard drive and stuff. <laughs> well, I mean, have you ever seen the one on TV? No. Oh, uh, it's, it's just equally as bad. Oh, my God. Double my speed is, like, totally cool. Oh All right. God. Well, listen, we're talking about parental criticism, and uh, there are some more emails here. But you know what? Before we get back to the emails, I think it, I'm going to take uh, take some of your calls. I think our good buddy Steve from Katona slash Dobbs Ferry is on the line with us. Hey, Steve, you're on Let Them Play, buddy. Tony, how are you today? I am doing great. How are you? All right, I'm trying to double my speed this morning, so I'm going to have another cup of coffee. <laughs> Dude, it's like, it totally cleaned up my hard drive and stuff. <laughs> so listen, parental criticism, you know, you're right, it's been around forever. It'll always be around because it's, first of all, I can't, I can't run around criticizing or I shouldn't run around criticizing your kid. It's easy to criticize my own kid, and partly because you're going to look at him and most of the time want you to do, want him or her to do things the way you have done things, not the way they want to do it. You tend to forget that they're their own person. But uh, it's, it's always going to be around because it's easy. And, and, again, much easier to criticize your own kid and, uh, than to criticize somebody else's kid and also a lot less, uh, lot less chance of a fistfight breaking out. Well, it, well, that's certainly true. But, you know, here's one of the things that gets me. When it comes to things like school or chess club or piano lessons, you don't hear about that constant bickering and, and over-the-top criticism of your own kids. It seems like in other aspects of their life where their development is equally, if not more important, we seem much more supportive of them. It seems like we, we're always there to kind of lend a hand, you know? But when it comes to sports, something really different happens. And, and, and I'm, I'm not trying to solve this one today. I just want a bunch of regular schmoes like me to chime in and give me some ideas. What is it about sports that makes it so different? Probably it's that old, uh, you know, living vicariously through your child, I guess. So, you know, I look at my kid on the ball field and I say, oh, I would have done it this way and I would have done it this way. And my kid plays piano, something I wish I had done, never did it, so how can I criticize it? But I played a lot of sports, so uh, certainly easier to criticize in that regard. But, uh, yeah, you're right. I think you're absolutely right that it is, and maybe it's the whole ego thing, it is certainly more, uh, more common on the athletic field than anywhere else. And maybe you know, we're not going to solve it today or any other day for that matter. You're right. <laughs> well, I'm not going to sell myself short. I'm a pretty smart guy, and with guys like you helping out, maybe we will. But you know, thanks for the call as always, Steve. And I think one of the things that that, that Steve brings up is is, and we started to allude to is. There is a real emphasis on recognition through sports that really does surpass. I mean, we talk, you know, every week. I mean, things like MSG Varsity are around now. So these kids are getting highlighted every day for things that they accomplish on the ball field. And while they'll throw in those really god-awful shows about the academic side, nobody tunes into MSG Varsity to, to see the trivia show. And nobody tunes in to find out how they'd run the United Nations. And nobody tunes in to find out the scholar of the week. It's just not the case. And for a kid to get recognition uh, as a scholar, you know, they got to get like a perfect, perfect score in their on their SATs or something like that. But it seems like any one day your kid hits a home run, and uh, you know, you and the rest of the parents carry him on their shoulders for an ice cream, and and uh, and they're the hero at least until next week. So, you know, Steve, again, great call as always, and I appreciate it. Uh, we will get back to some more of the uh, some more of the emails that came in. Uh, we got one here from. Uh, this guy either moves a lot or there's just too many wusses uh, living in, in Westchester County because we got one here from Anonymous in Lincolndale. <laughs> uh, so this is gonna, probably going to be a good one or they don't want their name associated to it. So Anonymous in Lincolndale writes in and says, Hey, Coach Tony, some people don't realize that this constant criticism doesn't just affect the child. It trickles down and affects a lot of other people as well. I will give you an example. I watched a youth baseball team this past summer, and on this team there was a dad slash coach who seemed to be loaded with criticism. In this case, it really didn't affect his own kid as much, but it was very interesting to see what I call the true trickle-down effects. Turns out, whenever another kid on the team would make a mistake, this kid was so used to hearing criticisms that he would actually take on the critic role and start tearing into his teammates for their mistakes. There were even times when this kid was the one who made the mistakes, but he would turn and blame his own mistakes on the other kids. I personally found this disgusting, 
And I'm sure the coach has no idea the horrible mindset that he is instilling and inflicting on his own son and the impact that it has on his teammates. Well, it, Anonymous, you know, I, I really wish you would have tagged your name to that one because that's that's a great point. And, I, and the good news is it doesn't happen all that often. But I think, you know, those of us who have been around youth sports for quite some time understand this whole idea of the blame game. And it is actually pretty rare for a kid to be so out of line and so poorly behaved without a coach stepping in and reprimanding them. However, as you stated, in this case, the coach is his dad. And so, I've, uh, as I've said many times before, um, don't be so hard on the kid because there, there are no bad kids. There are only bad parents. So if you know a kid who acts this way towards his teammates, look no further than mom and dad. And you're going to see where this gets, uh, this kid gets his horrible attitude towards his teammates. But yes, you do indeed bring up a very good point. All that criticism can certainly lead to a sense that whenever something goes wrong, it has to be someone's fault. And that just, that just isn't healthy. Um, we've all seen examples of that. You look at the criticism, and if you don't, you know, criticism in and of itself is not necessarily a bad thing. But if you are piling it on in a negative way, this is just like anything else. I mean, you can only take so much, whether it's, you know, whether you're arguing with your wife on a regular basis in an unhealthy manner or, or anything else that just starts to build up over time. Guess what? What happens when things start to build up over time? At some point, there's that last straw that breaks the camel's back and somebody's going to explode. Now, it turns out, uh, anonymous uh, in Lincolndale that, you know, the, this particular kid uh, apparently has blow ups all the time and he's blowing up at his teammates. So I, I don't know what kind of a healthy hometown attitude um, is instilled on that particular team, uh, but it seems like it, it certainly leaves a, a bit to be desired. So, you know, I don't know how else to, to solve this one as long as, as as dad is the coach and allows this behavior. It turns out that uh, you, you're going to be faced with the same dilemmas, um, and it's going to obviously hinder your ability to uh, to watch and enjoy these games. So, But thanks for the email. I think it is actually a pretty interesting point and one I was not going to bring up. So thank you. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we have another email here from, uh, from Joe in Yonkers. And, uh, Joe from Yonkers writes in, Hey, Coach Tony, I know exactly what you're talking about. And, well, good. <laughs> and what I find interesting is that this seems to happen more to talented kids. And I think that's a real shame. After all, think about it. As the parent, you have a kid who is excelling. And instead of making them feel like they've accomplished something, they're mentally either obviously or subliminally beaten down and made to feel like no matter what they do, it isn't good enough. At some point, the kid has to get tired of it, wouldn't you think? It's also interesting that the parents I see who do this tend to be those who were never really accomplished athletes when they were younger. It seems to me that the more accomplished the parents were at younger ages, the more perspective they have. It's the guys who never threw a ball in their lives who seem to be insatiable when it comes to the accomplishments of their kids. Well, Joe, there, there are certainly no absolutes when it comes to kids and parents and, and the behavior between the two. But you do bring up some very good points that I think certainly hold water. I also find there's something I kind of disagree with you a little bit about. And again, it's because there are no gen, uh, generalities, if that's uh, even a word. Um, I know parents who were very, very accomplished athletes who are still their kid's biggest critic. They're not over-the-top idiots. Matter of fact, is a very good uh, friend of mine, uh, a lady who, and if you're listening, I'm not going to say your name, but hopefully you call in, she played Division I college basketball, which, you know, again, she, you know, she's around my age. I'm in mid-40s. You know, back then, girls playing Division I hoops, that's a pretty big deal. So she was obviously a very accomplished uh, athlete. She's still a very accomplished athlete. She's a marathon runner. She does a whole bunch of stuff. She's a very inspiring lady. In fact, she's one of those ladies that just is incredibly charismatic. And she is, um, in my little town, has, has actually created this cult of Kool-Aid drinking moms who are just running marathons all over the place. They go to Vegas. They go to Philadelphia. This lady just, you know, she's the Pied Piper. She goes to run a marathon, and she just inspires all these women to do it. She coaches with me. And, you know, she admittedly will be harder on her own kid. So, Joe, I don't think 
you're you're 100 percent on the mark there. And I'm sure you have experiences that you're drawing from to say this. But, you know, I can tell you that this is a woman who has a, ter a tremendous disposition. She is as sweet as a piece of pie. Very good athlete, and even she gets wrapped up in this idea of, Ugh! you know, you can see the frustration when her kid makes a mistake, but she she never comes out and, and beats on her kid uh, verbally or mentally. It's just something that's just inherent in all of us, I think, that just maybe we just want the best for our kids and we're just not saying it the right way. Uh, I, I just don't know, but, you know, I got to say, it, so, some, some good points there, um, but having said that, Joe, I do agree with you that... It seems that the you know the guy who you know seems like he's throwing the ball with the wrong hand who just never played sports as a kid they too, they do tend to lose perspective and be more over the top and out of line when it comes to the criticism but I'm not really talking about necessarily the negative aspects of the criticism I'm just saying even the constructive criticism we're banging on our kids way too hard and 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 something's just not right about it I really do want to hear what you guys have to say. So uh, we are going to keep the studio lines going at 914-693-5700. Um, we are going to have to go to break here. But again, give us a call. Let you know what you think. 914-693-5700. Before we go to break, just yesterday, we brought our fourth grade girls travel basketball team to Somers 202 Tavern for our year-end party. Uh, my good buddy there, Joe Maz, was the most gracious host as always putting out a terrific spread for the kids at a very reasonable price there's always something good going on at somers 202 located well where else it's <laughs> route 202 in somers uh but the street is also known as tomahawk street and the actual address is believe it or not i think it's yorktown heights but it's called somers 202 tavern call somers 202 today at 914-248-8100 to make your reservation today. You can sit in their classy dining room for an elegant dining experience with a great menu, or you can just sit in the bar area and watch a game on one of their many big flat screen HD TVs. Somers 202 is a place the whole family is going to love. So go see my buddy Joe Maz and tell him the coach Tony sent you. Stick around, folks. We'll be right back.